We've never opened with applause before. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what we should do. If you can hear me, clap once. No, we should just open with a round of applause. Okay, yeah. all right, I'm going to yeah, clap. Y'all ready? So ready. <laughs> Guys, welcome back <laughs> to Off the Clock, the soon-to-be number, number one, one podcast, podcast in the world. world. Oh, yeah. So good to be back. Whoa. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been a minute. We had our uh, fall break, which was not as long as <laughs> nope it was not very long ut has two yeah. days for fall break so yeah, yeah. shout out hey we ut people two, if you're listening why great. isn't your fall break the same time as knox county school's fall break yeah that's my psa that. um <laughs> lol <laughs> although we will be chilling for like christmas break because we got a month and a half for that what so. that's true are you for real we got a long christmas break okay i can't complain i guess yeah i can't either but come on fall break guys yeah Seriously. come on really Dude. come on that's so nice. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, no, we're in a new room now, guys. So if you're watching on the YouTube, I uh, hope you enjoy the cool, like, wooden wall thingy <laughs> behind us. It looks kind of sick, honestly. Please go I'm watch YouTube, lie. please. Yeah. My uh, two cents. <laughs> Grant works so hard on that. Sure. So hard. Um, today, we've got Steven. Hester with us. Um, he Did is I say our... that too soon? Sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> You'll understand this, this podcast is just a go with the flow Perfect. thing. Perfect. Oh, yeah. It's a conversation. We, we just roll. Um yeah, tell us a little bit uh, about yourself. Aiden has like a specific yeah, yeah. way he yeah, likes yeah. to do so, this. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> there is a there's a method. So these are up to your interpretation and how you want to take one about this Aiden. <laughs> no. Who are you? Okay. What do you do? Okay. And why are you here? That's not really up to interpretation for any of those. That's pretty. <laughs> you would be That's surprised. You would be surprised. <laughs> actually, D- D- Dylan Canup was like I was about to just say, like m- like myself or I like he was so confused. Who, it was who hysterical. am I? That's <laughs> shout out I guess Dylan I Canup. About that. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, do I look at the camera? You can do whatever you yeah, want. Whatever I you mean, want. I look at the camera when I feel like I I'm not going to look at the camera. Yeah, you can just right here. We gotta. Yeah, just just converse. Nice conversation well, going. <laughs> nice flow. I can um, all that good stuff. There we go. Well, my <laughs> name is uh, Stephen Hester. Um, I am the pastor of worship for Student Ministries at Fellowship Let's Church go. Knoxville, the Middlebrook location. Come yep. on. And, um, Let's go. <laughs> should we clarify that? Because some of our listeners will be like, I thought the, the, the pastor of student worship was on like, a long time ago. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> slight update real quick, Stephen. <laughs> Sorry. Spencer is... Um, no, it's fine. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Spencer is now the worship pastor of Middlebrook Fellowship. Entirely. Like, Which yeah. is awesome. He's, yes. He's over all of it. So. so he's still here. Big Red will be back. Yes, he will. At some point. Yeah. Uh, so congrats Soon. to Spencer. But yeah. now we have A Stephen. round of applause for Spencer. Yes. I love this applause thing we're doing. Yeah, this is so I'm much fun. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of this. I hope he listens to this. <laughs> <laughs> he will. I hope. All right. Continue. All right. Yeah. So, um, Stephen Hester, uh, worship pastor. Um, does that sum up who I am and what I do? Kind of. Yeah. Should I talk about other things that I do? Sure. I guess it is. Yeah. Up what, for what other hobbies? Yeah. What other hobbies do you have? Other hobbies. Um, well, I've. Uh, I mean, you can assume this uh i think but i've been a musician for a long time um and uh i don't play very many instruments mostly piano he shreds the piano he does (laughs) let's just be clear about that hopefully not too much (laughs) i need those things intact (laughs) um but yeah so i play piano i sing a little bit um and i play guitar kind of um word yeah and that's pretty much it um but outside of music um, I've been a barista for six years. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, worked at a few cafes. Stay tuned. We're going to talk about that more. We'll get there later. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. In the episode. He's okay. got a question about that. Uh, yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Great. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited for that. Um, but yeah, so I've been a barista for a while and then I, uh, I've also been doing photography for about Let's go, four dude. years. Dude. Come on. Um, well, I've been doing it. I've been getting paid to do it for about four years. I've been yeah. doing nice. it even better for a while. Um, even better, but uh, and those are pretty much the three things. Those are the let's go. Yeah, that's yeah. the triad that is Stephen Hester. <laughs> the triad. <laughs> the What's triad. your favorite kind of triad? My p- <laughs> dude, that's a good question. I gotta say, uh, probably like Legend of Zelda. Yes. That triad, <laughs> you know. 
That's probably my favorite one. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite answer of all time <laughs> i'm a huge zelda guy by the way like legit it's it's anyway continue yep all right <laughs> so steven now that we have you introduced yeah i want to turn it back over to ian as he has kind of the, the plan sure in place yeah. of Great. the structure well, you guys are official <laughs> wait there's was a i supposed to do the next part no, I mean, it's kind of just like... So no. Are you telling me <laughs> you guys didn't talk about this beforehand? We I'm did. I just don't remember How unprofessional can it get? <laughs> yeah. Very. Oh, you don't Go even stream know. Go stream Old Gold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Shout out Old Gold. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's been a few other... There, there have been some wacky episodes. There not have. gonna lie. There have. Not gonna lie. We did have. There is one episode. It may still exist that like we had and we started it and it just completely got cut. Like we just... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, That's happened a couple times. Sad. Yeah, it has. Uh-huh. It just we were like, nah, this isn't happening. Well, it's like if you're writing a song or you know composing something or making something and like you decide it's garbage. Thirty minutes in, you're just like, why am I trying to do this? Yeah. It's not even good. Yeah. So more happens. like two anyway. and a half yeah. hours in. <laughs> so, um, okay. Well, first question was tell us about yourself, but uh, second up would be since you are a musician and you are the worship pastor, um. What got you into music specifically? Oh, that's a great like that question. Okay, so my family has been pretty into music for a while. Um, and by a while, I mean my whole life. Um, Let's go. And uh, so, yeah, so like most of my siblings uh, play instruments. And, um, you know, uh, it just kind of, you know, the more people that do it, the more people are going to do it, you know? So I, that's I'd, a good take right there. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's a good take. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, you know, I started, well, I didn't really care about music a ton. I just kind of listened to what most of my siblings listened to, which was like a lot of Reliant K, Sanctus, Sanct, Sanctus there Real. It there it is. Cool. Um, and, uh, you know, the afters, and yeah. dude, Let's need go. to breathe. Yeah. I could go on. Yes. Um, Shout out, need to breathe. Uh, <laughs> hey, need to breathe. <laughs> need to you breathe. When podcast. you listen to this, <laughs> <laughs> when this becomes the number one podcast in the world, and need to breathe <laughs> listens to this. Matter matter is that the goal? Is that like, do we know we're number one? We do. You guys know you're number one when uh, need to breathe listens to your podcast. I mean, that's the next step. <laughs> I feel like when we take down Logan Paul, that's what we're... Yeah, that's kind of okay. how that all started. It was a... Uh, it was. I don't remember. We just came in one day and I was like, oh, we're coming for Logan Paul just <laughs> out of nowhere. And so we started being that's like, soon awesome. to be number one podcast because they say they're the number one podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just kind of like... And it's just not true at this point. It's just right. not true. I mean, it's yeah. Just, yeah. Neither, neither one, neither claim is true. <laughs> theirs or ours. So, <laughs> so anyways, um, so uh, I was listening to music and my oldest brother uh, for my birthday, no, for his birthday, he got a new iPod. And so his old iPod was up for grabs. (laughs) And of course, his old iPod wasn't even his original iPod. It was my oldest brother's iPod. (laughs) Uh, Real quick, how many siblings do you have, Steven? uh, 11. Whoa. What? Yeah. (laughs) No way. Yeah. Yeah. That's insane. Bro. Yeah. Wait, how many brothers and sisters? So six brothers and five sisters. We should have talked about this earlier. Dude, oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah. That's insane. I yeah. so I have not met Steven like more than twice, yeah. maybe. So I don't know him very well. We've this is all had, like we've shared a few sentences. He just like yeah. casually brought that up at lunch the other day. He's like, Yeah, I have eleven siblings. I went, huh, what? Holy I'm sorry. Mo- Wait, so where are you in like the stack? I'm the eight. <laughs> In the stack. He said, where are you in the stack? <laughs> okay, so in hey, the so stack of my siblings. Yeah, you're on the bottom ish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Technically I would be closer to the top, because if, if it's a stack, oh, you're, then wait, the first you're right. That's at the bottom. Facts. I didn't even think about and that. that just I, just, I went there. for first one, but yeah, it makes sense if like first one they stack yeah. on top like a totem pole yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> okay, well fun so facts, I'm guys. up there. I'm yeah, up you're there. up there at the top of the totem <laughs> pole oh of the house. Um Anyways, continue. yeah. So, so, anyways, um, so, uh, so it got passed down, and then it got passed down to me. It skipped a brother. Um, he didn't want it, so I took it. Um, yeah, and so it was a it was a uh, first generation iPod Nano. Nice. Yes. yes. Nice. I think it had less than a gigabyte of space on it. <laughs> Can um, you? Wow. Yeah. No. That's crazy to even yeah. think about that. So Man. what I would do with it every day is I would do all of my schoolwork because we were homeschooled. 
Um, Ayo. So I would do all this, up. I would do all of my schoolwork in the morning, and then I would take the iPod Nano. And in my dad's office, there was a like an iPod dock that he had, right? Yeah. But like you know, like you have to literally sit the iPod on the dock, yep. Yep. and so it can't move. Yep. So, but what I would do is I'd finish all my school, and then I would go up to the loft, and I would set it on the dock, and I would shuffle all of the music in the iPod, um, and then I would play Parachute while it was on the dock and i would do that for hours like six hours at a time it was yeah it's impressive it was was just it was awesome i loved it um and so you know i just kind of listen to music i wasn't like into music but i liked it um until i heard one song um that blew me away and it was uh it was icky thump by the white stripes Interesting. If you've never heard it, I have not. Pause the podcast and or Here. YouTube video. Oh, dude, no, we just we'll just play it on the podcast. No, we'll just play it. No and way. Then clip, space clip a little it, bit of space the audio. No we'll way. Like, nah. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Cool. All right. Take a listen to this. He... The audio will cut out. <laughs> the for audio a second will cut out so we can listen to this song. Okay. All right. Hold up. This is the song that got me into music. What's up, guys? This is Aiden from the future. As you know, uh, we had to cut this music out of the podcast just to cover ourselves from potentially being illegal. But uh, you heard Steven say it is Icky Thump by the White Stripes. So go ahead and give that a listen on wherever you stream music. And we're right back into the episode right now. Here we go. All right, we could probably stop yeah. right there. Dude, um, <laughs> <laughs> I love well, that. there you go. Yeah, there you go. So love that. that's the that was the first song that I ever heard, and I was like, "Whoa!" Like, <laughs> I didn't know music could make you feel things. Because yeah. um, like I was listening to that song, and I was ready to take over the world. You know? <laughs> yes, sir. kicking doors down. That's and how music should make you feel. It was awesome, <laughs> and so I heard that, and I um, immediately wanted to learn guitar. Mm. Right. Um, cause I just, it was, it was awesome. If you listen to the song, there's an awesome, uh, solo, uh, an electric guitar solo in there and it just, it'll, it'll rock your world. Mm. It really will. Um, so I want to learn guitar and my oldest brother convinced my parents to make me learn piano first. <laughs> that sounds something like that's I would every, do. That's, that's what, what I would do. Yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah, I everyone would do. should yeah. learn. Everyone should. Yeah, I at the time I was so annoyed, and so I only <laughs> took piano until they let me learn guitar. But about five years in, um, just casual five years. In. Yeah, <laughs> just five years later, maybe four. It was around four to five years. Um, I uh, I got my first keyboard. And I started writing music, and I realized, oh, I kind of like piano. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, so then I, you know, just kept with piano, and then I didn't even learn guitar until I was fifteen. And um, and you can't really call it learning. I I like learned chords, <laughs> kinda, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, fun fact about guitar, though, I'm glad I didn't start on guitar because I probably would have given up because. Um, a uh, fun fact about me is I have really short thumbs. Um, huh. Yeah, super short and stubby. <laughs> um, and so bar chords, so hard for me. Mm. Mm. So hard for me. Also, reaching around the neck of the guitar. Yeah, I can't do like the wraparounds. Yeah. Like, with your, it's oh, tough. I can't do it, man. It's tough. And so if I started on guitar and then I got to bar chords and like it was my only experience with <laughs> music, yeah. I probably would have been like, not for me. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Well, hey, maybe your older brother had something like something in there. Yeah. I, absolutely he did maybe he looked at your stubby thumbs and was like this kid's got plenty yeah <laughs> <laughs> he's like nah he's like not a chance <laughs> <laughs> so wait, how far can you reach on piano just out of curiosity uh, I can reach a tenth okay cool. yeah. oh nice yeah um, which like is fine yeah you know that's yeah yeah so um, <laughs> but yeah um, so anyways I I uh, got into music from that and my oldest brother was surprised that I liked Jack White and I ended up liking Bob Dylan. And, um, so he showed me a documentary called, uh, well, I don't remember if it's a good documentary or not. So I'm just going to say it was a documentary. Um, and, uh, and since then I just got more and more into music and there you go. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So kind of transitioning into one of the other things we wanted to talk about. Sure. <laughs> Kind of talk about the transition of that story 
where what was the moment like where you're like, all right, I want to do worship ministry. So talk about how wow. you like got into worship ministry, yeah. playing at churches. You went to Johnson, is that right? Yeah. 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 Talk about talk about that whole sure. whatever that looked like. Sure. So, um, you know, so I liked music, um, and at that point I was already, you know, writing music, um, not songs, just kind of like pieces. Um, we we're a super big soundtrack family, so, um, we were all about that, but, um, I was, uh, it was probably, it was about freshman year of high school, and I started hearing, um, people talk about like, you know, kingdom work and we're all kingdom workers, um, like working in the kingdom of God and, you know, like the whole Ephesians 2.10 thing, like we were designed in his handiwork to do things, you know, set before us that we're prepared to do. Um, and so I just started thinking like, okay, so if I'm a kingdom worker, what is my thing that God has set me up to do? Um, like what are the things he's made me passionate about? What am I good at? Um, and I wasn't like, I wasn't like amazing at piano or anything, but I was good enough at it and I, uh, and I liked it. And so I was like, well, you know, I don't know what God wants me to do long-term, but at least for right now, the next thing to do for God's kingdom is just to do music stuff, whatever that means. Yeah. So I was kind of, you know, letting that bounce around my head a little bit. And, uh, it wasn't that I, I didn't take that seriously until I was sitting in, um, a uh, um, a British literature class, um, and uh, that sounds fun. Yeah, actually, it was a great class. Yeah, yeah, um, it's super good. First, yeah. wrote my first paper ever in that class. Nice. Yeah, freshman year of high school. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, homeschooled. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, but my sister was also in that class at the same time, and so I think we were doing some kind of exercise where we were like compliment somebody like uh uh just somebody in the room just say something nice about them you know mm-hmm. um and my sister uh like really randomly out of nowhere was like steven's super good at piano and i was like what <laughs> <laughs> and she was like yeah like you could probably make it on the worship band if you wanted to and i was like you think so and she's like oh yeah for sure and i was like wow i like hadn't even really thought about that you know <laughs> and so then i was like well i guess i could try out um, so I did. Um, and up until that point, I'd only, uh, I'd only learned piano from like sheet music. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know like chords or anything. That is <laughs> a wow. tough transition. That's Dude, I had the same, same thing for me. Dude. Yeah. yeah. So, and That's I was like fun. learning from like a classical pianist, mm-hmm. who, mm-hmm. you know, and she didn't talk to us about chords. No. Yeah. Interesting. Um, and so, uh, a week before my audition, they send me the songs I'm doing. Right. It was, um, I remember it was, This Is Amazing Grace was one of them <laughs> uh, by Phil Wickham. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh. Uh, yeah, it was awesome. Stop. Uh, I cannot. That was one of them. And then it was another one that uh, my church had written that I, I still really love. Um, and then uh, it was one more that I can't think of the name of right now. But um, another classic. And, uh, so I got the chords and I looked at the sheets they gave me and I was like, what the heck is this? <laughs> <laughs> like, these are just the lyrics with a bunch of letters over them. I, I've never I know the seen alphabet. this. What is yeah, this? Yeah, I've never seen this <laughs> in my so life. Funny. And so I was like, I was like, is that the melody? Like, I didn't, I just, I didn't know what it was, you know? I saw F and I saw Am and I saw G, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I was really confused. Um, that's amazing. That's awesome. So I, uh, so, but luckily I was at, uh, one of my best friend's house and his older brother was, uh, on the worship team. So I just went over to him and he gave me like, he was about to go somewhere, but he gave me like a, like a five to 10 minute crash course on chords. Oh. Right. Oh, there it is. Um, and I used that five to 10 minutes, uh, to practice. And, uh, that's what brought me to my, uh, audition. And it was horrible. <laughs> it was very bad. I did a bad job. Oh, yeah. But they let me in by some grace of God, and it was a grace because I did not do well. <laughs> um, but yeah, they they uh, they brought me in, and um, uh, and so uh, I I started playing that summer, and uh, I was super nervous, but I you know I did my best because I also um, like major introvert i do not like being in front of people for anything um i don't enjoy it yeah um and like even 
my younger siblings did choir. Um, and mom asked me, cause I was, I was young enough to do it. And mom asked me, she's like, do you want to do choir with them? And I was like, no. <laughs> and she was like, why? And I was like, you want me to get up on a stage and sing in front of people? <laughs> no freaking way. Like I will not do that in a million years, you know? Um, hated being in front of people. Um, but like, I just, I started doing this thing cause I felt like it was what God wanted me to do at least right then. And, um, so I, uh, and I still, this still happens sometimes, but every time I got off the stage, I, my entire body was shaking. Um, like just cause I was nervous, yeah. you know? Um, but, uh, the people that were running the ministry were, uh, super kind and genuine and, and they cared a lot about, um, uh, bringing up the next generation of worshipers. And um, so they gave me a lot of space and a lot of grace yeah. um, to not be good, um, but to be in spaces where people who were good at it were. Um, and uh, and so that was super huge for me. Um, somebody ended up getting hired on as the new middle school pastor, and they were struggling to find the worship pastor. And they were struggling to find uh, like people to volunteer on Saturday night because we had a Saturday night service and two Sunday services. Mm-hmm. So he put together a weekly band um, that would play every Saturday night. And uh, and he asked me to be a part of it. Um, and so I was like, sure, you know, <laughs> like that sounds great. That's awesome. um, and so I got to play keys every single Saturday. Um, and yeah, and it was awesome because like I wasn't good. Uh, but every <laughs> single Saturday I got to learn a new song and I practiced it a ton and I learned what that rhythm was like. And then I also had people every single week giving me feedback mm-hmm. on like, maybe try this next time, maybe do this with your sounds, maybe, you know, whatever. Um, and, uh, so I just got a lot of people pouring into me, making me a better musician that also gave me a, a community that I felt like was my community for the first time ever. Mm-hmm. Um, people just, you know, being encouraging and, and creative so that I cared about the same things and it was fun and, um, and uh, they spent a lot of t- intentional time doing like devos and community stuff. Yeah. Um, and so it was just kind of, I just kind of kept doing that. And, and that's where I started to learn what worship actually is, um, what a worship leader actually is, eventually what a worship pastor is, um, and what it, what it actually means to be up on a stage or be behind an instrument or a microphone. Um, and as they kind of like taught what that looked like, I just came to care about it a whole lot, you know, and, um, and, and so ultimately that just led to, you know, I was, I joined the worship band because I felt like it was the thing God wanted me to do right then. Um, I didn't really know what his long-term plan was, but since then it's just kind of been that over and over like, well, the next thing God wants me to do is this and it's worship again. So, okay. And then the next thing he wanted me to do was go to Johnson to study worship. Okay. And then the next thing he wanted me to do was stay in Knoxville. And, and then, you know, I, I accepted a position at this church. And so Praise mm. God. just kind go. of a long series of, <laughs> of saying, all right, you know, to, yeah, to walk through those open like. doors. That's huge, man. Absolutely. Yeah, trying to. That's, that's so awesome. Awful. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. So kind of with the topic of worship, you've been in worship ministry for a long time. And all of us are, of course, in worship ministry in some capacity. I'm on staff here as a worship leader. Ian does a lot of stuff with our student ministry. Grant does a lot of stuff in college life and in uh, main worship ministry as well. Um, so here's kind of an interesting question. What are some um, things you think the church, the modern church, the mon- modern worship ministry gets wrong about what? <laughs> oh! What about, a question! Wait, 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 about, let him finish it. about what worship is and how Ooh. it should be. Come on! Whoa. Holy crap! That's a haymaker right there. Praise God! All right. That's so good. Um, first off, I am extremely hesitant <laughs> to say uh, that people are doing things wrong sure. with their ministry. That's fair. Um, That's fair. Because. Um, uh, we're the body of Christ, we're a body of believers, and we've all been called accordingly to do the work Christ has set before us. And each individual has their own race, and and everyone's, not everyone's, but um, there are a diverse number of races to be run. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's super important. So whenever it comes to like people running certain ministries a certain way, when it comes to certain things, I'm, I'm hesitant to say like, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. Or like, oh, that's the wrong thing to do. Um, there are, you know, exceptions, of course. Like if somebody was like, I don't think Jesus rose from the dead. I'd be like, no, that's wrong. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's not correct. 
Um, uh, so, but you know, the like certain practices, like how people run their services sometimes, or like how many songs they do, or the order they do things, or whether or not they do this kind of prayer, or whatever. Like, I'm um, very hesitant to say like that's the wrong way to do worship. Sure. Um, and honestly, that answer right there is what I think a lot of people get wrong. Yeah. Oh wow. Um, that's good. Something that. Uh, I learned a lot about in the past few years that I've come to care about a lot is um, this idea of the ecumenical church. Um, And don't ask me to explain what the word ecumenical means because I couldn't (laughs) tell you. But um, I do know that largely um, like the the ecumenical church is literally just the body of Christ, right? Like the church as a whole. Um, And so often with our approaches to worship and worship ministry and the way we go about things, we are so quick to look at other churches and say like, you guys are doing that wrong. That's not what you should be doing, you know? And frankly, we just don't know what the Lord has called them to, Yeah, you know? Um, people live in wildly different contexts. Church here in Knoxville, Tennessee looks super different than church in Las Vegas, yeah. you know? Um, and I don't think that's a bad thing, you know? Uh, I don't think... I, I don't think churches are supposed to look the exact same everywhere, you know? Um, I think we're supposed to follow the same principles, um, but those principles can be practiced in a variety of different ways. And mm. I think a lot of people forget that. Yeah. So they're super quick to jump to, well, you shouldn't be doing that or you shouldn't be doing this. And it's like, well, That's maybe so you shouldn't be doing that, but um, this is what the Lord has called me to. Yeah. Mm. You know? That's a really good answer. That, that's... That's, that's a great answer. That's, great. <laughs> yeah, honestly, that's awesome. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. There you go. I um, don't even know what to say after that. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> he's processing. He's guys. like, we're all speechless right now. <laughs> See, we just blew us away. <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel like Aiden has something, so like I don't want to like I'm jump to, to I'm something trying, else. If you have anything, you're good. I'm trying to articulate something. He's gonna oh, get I it. You, I hear you. He's done this before. Throw back to decaffeinated, yeah, right? Yeah. Now. <laughs> it's like it's like Aiden is like buffering, just a little bit. There's footage. Um, that I'll roll just back. Ro- yeah. <laughs> exactly. Just do that. Um, I don't know. It's a thing. Well, think about yeah, absolutely. Like as the oldest child, you're usually the last one, or the sorry, you. Let me synthesize Words my thoughts for a second. Uh, <laughs> are we restarting the podcast? No, all right. I hope you like that footage. <laughs> Welcome back to Off Welcome the Clock. Welcome back to this episode of Off the Clock. <laughs> okay, Aiden. What's the biggest misconception that you thought when you started about worship? And then now you're like, that was not mm. maybe I maybe something that you See, learned to do differently come on. yeah or something that you do now or something like that oh man I I'm g- glad you buffered because that's a good question yeah I Shoo. I I could give a million and one answers to that um because yeah I just feel like I'm always learning more and yeah. and learning differently um but one thing uh, one thing I think, and I, oh, I gotta be careful about how I say this because I could say it wrong and communicate something that is not correct. <laughs> uh, but I think one thing is about the nature of like why we worship. Um, I used to think, uh, that we worship because God needs our worship, you know? Um, and he doesn't, you know, he deserves our worship. Um, but God doesn't need our worship. One of the important things about um, if, you know, if we believe that God is three in one, you know, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, um, then uh, we see in Scripture constantly that um, the Trinity, uh, that is God, um, is constantly lifting each head of the Trinity up um, in in praise and adoration and encouragement. Um, So the Lord, um, as we understand it through Scripture, um, is is uh, self fulfilling the praise he needs, you know, um, and so 
we don't enter into like a Sunday morning worship or a Wednesday evening worship because God needs us to worship him. You know, we're his creation and, and he needs the, the gas, you know, mm-hmm. um, that's not what it is. Um, it, it truly is one. He deserves it because we're a broken people that mess up all the time and he still loves us and saves us every day, which is insane. Um, but then, but then two, um, uh, just the fact that he allows us into the story that is worship and worshiping him is a grace in of itself because we're not mm. worthy of that story. Um, but he makes us worthy and brings us up into that. Um, and I, I used to think, you know, when I first started, I was like, you know, God needs us to worship him. You know, he needs people to love him. It's like, well, God really doesn't need any of us, um, which makes it so much more powerful that it's a grace that we get to do anything that we get to do yeah. in relationship with God. Absolutely. You know, that's huge. Yeah. I I, I kind of want to add. So this is something that just popped into my mind of kind of like a, to use a fellowship term, a reframe in my mind about <laughs> worship. Nice. And I've told, I've told this to like the worship team around student ministries a couple times, like before service, but uh, I was listening to a podcast uh, which conveniently <laughs> what is entitled life reframed. Nice. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, a fellowship church podcast. Shout out to um, fellowship Rick and Lauren. Uh, it's their podcast here. And uh, so I was listening to one of their episodes featuring um, Emily McCoy, who's another one of our worship pastors mm. here. She's Who's phenomenal. Freaking awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and if you haven't listened to this podcast, uh, I recommend you go listen to it because she obviously puts it way better than I can. But she was just kind of talking about um, these reframes in her mind about just kind of how about philosophy of worship and how she perceives worship and how worship is and like the stones of remembrance and all this stuff. Um, but she said this thing that she said this one thing and it was something to the effect of like, I think we've all had Sundays or Wednesdays or Saturdays or whatever, where we um, walk off stage and we're like, why didn't I feel it? Yeah. You know, why, why wasn't, why wasn't that what it was last week? You know? And that's, and this podcast kind of like taught me to like really had me check my heart in that moment because Emily was like, See, like that happens sometimes, but like the reality is we don't worship like to feel that we don't worship because of that. Like God deserves our worship, whether we get something out of it or not. And sometimes he meets us in that moment and we get a little glimpse of like Jesus or the Holy Spirit or whatever. But sometimes we don't. And that's okay because like, that's not why we do this. Mm -hmm. And that, that was just like a big thing in my mind. I was like, yeah, uh huh. That's right. And to add on to that, even um, I would say that we always get something out of it, regardless of if we feel it or not. Because similar to if you hear every if if you I'll 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 go to the the extreme side really quick. If you grow up and uh, every single day, um, you somebody's telling you something negative about yourself you know like you grow up and every day you hear you're stupid you're ugly like whatever you know you're w- as you grow you're going to start to believe those things are true about yourself mm. and and it's going to be That's more you. it's going to be it's going to be more like not even opinion as much as just fact yeah. you know it's just kind of like oh well this is just me because you've been molded to believe a certain thing when we gather as believers um uh uh you know, singing worship songs and learning uh, from scripture and from each other and encouraging each other and, and reminding each other of who God is, we're molding our minds into who we should be as the people of God, you know? Yeah. And so, and we don't, we don't always feel that, but we walk away um, being, uh, having God's truth impressed on us. Mm. Um which shapes how we think and how we see the world, um, which is a lot of what worship does mm-hmm. every week. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying there's like yeah. not a short term, there might not be a short term like, oh yeah, I feel that or I see that, but you might down the road or like if you do that every week for 10 years, you know, you might realize, oh, this is how far I've actually come. Mm-hmm. Like it actually has more effect long term than you think. Yeah. And I'll, I mean, I'll give you an example. Like there was a, I was helping out at a church service on Wednesday nights 
just a couple months ago and they did um they did more like uh like traditional services um but uh one of the things that they did every single week was they did a song um as like a moment of confession and the song just says lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world have mercy on us it's one of the most beautiful things um but i found myself um I, I found myself just singing it in my head on random days or mm. when on days that I was having a hard time or, f- or feeling, um, uh, you know, something was difficult or I, or I was feeling negatively about something um, or I, I did something or said something that I shouldn't have done. I had on repeat in my mind this prayer of Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mm. mercy on us. And it was a it was sa- a soundtrack to my to my life as I as I walked, you know. Um, and I experienced that because I had practiced it. Yeah. And that it had entered into my mm-hmm. into my life when before because I hadn't practiced that before. That wasn't something that was there. Yeah, absolutely. You know? It's like what you said, like the whole thing about. Well, it didn't. F- I didn't feel it this time when I was worshiping, and that's something that like I realized like a while ago but was there's like at a point in my life it would have been like why do you worship well the answer would be because i feel Mm. closer to the holy spirit or closer to god like whatever in a way that i don't not doing that which is that in and of itself is okay but like letting that be the drive and the primary reason yeah. Yeah. for why you worship yeah. is dangerous like just letting it be because you're chasing a feeling mm, and feelings yeah. yep. are fleeting and feelings change yep. yep um so yeah that's nice that's yeah. so good i that's would awesome. say that like so it's good. it's another one of those kind of things that like like you hear and it's like i mean yeah like of course we worship the lord because he's the lord but like like in practice i mean in all honesty some days that doesn't feel good enough yeah yep you know it's just yep. like man like Thank so God when that time for, comes of like it doesn't feel good enough, it's like yeah. well if it's just the feeling that we're going after, yeah, yeah, like then I had we're a, not going to do it. The kind of off topic, but like so I uh, I was listening to uh, one of Greg's shout out Greg previous guest of the podcast actually. <laughs> Let's go. The, Gre- the Greg was here thing is going to be like oh yeah, right. and there will be going to be there's right. A little, <laughs> there's a little tag right there if you want to go stream <laughs> Greg's episode. Not even kidding. <laughs> um. But yeah, so I was listening to one of his sermons on the way to UT two days ago, and um, I-, I can remember like being in this sermon and like listening along and being like, "Oh yeah, this is great." But like in this, I texted Ian about this. Uh, but yeah. like in this sermon, I-, I got to the end of it and I was just like, "Oh my gosh, Jesus is like, this is insane mm-hmm. that, that this has been done for us. That mm-hmm. this is yeah. that this has happened." Like. We we are awful. Yeah. Like I was like I I was like I suck. I am horrible. But like just that there is. I was just like wow. And and just like I feel like that was another moment where like in in that moment I was like yeah this is great like yeah. But then two days ago it was like and again this is the kind of thing that like yeah of course like Jesus saved the world and. You know, I'm something I mess you grow up. up hearing yeah. all the time. But it's just right. like, but it's just like, just the grace and the <laughs> profound. Like, I don't deserve this, yeah. and like, I never will. You yeah. know, yeah. it's just like yeah. that. That's like, so good. Well, and that kind of reminds me of the moment when you worship and like you're really hit hard by worship. Like, I don't know. Sometimes it happens a lot, like, like that, camps or like yeah conferences or like just a really good morning uh, when you kind of need that and you're hit. Like I've had moments where I'm hit really hard and I like I'm crying and like I don't know. I just feel like really close to God in that moment. And I have to like remember too that I can't chase that. Like that's what yeah. God gives to me. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I can't exactly. accomplish that on my own. Mm-hmm. And I find mm-hmm. myself yeah. sometimes like trying to chase that. Like really closeness when I really need to just, I don't know. I don't know what I need to do maybe, but I just like can't chase that for my own. Like God has to get that. That's really good. Like it's a gift. Like Mm -hmm. that moment you're saying like when worship, that moment where some worship wrecks you basically. Yeah. Yeah. But like that's a gift. You can't just try to produce that closeness all the time. Kind of like. You just have to sit and be open to it. Kind of like what Steven is saying. Like God is still God, whether or not you were like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah. So. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, also, we talked about this earlier, but you mentioned it like 
the whole thing about the song where they're confessing that time of confession. Mm-hmm. I know we talked about that earlier today, but I think that's, yeah, I really do think that's something that is worth as the church and like this generation that like is coming up as worship leaders, as just believers in general, like figuring out that time of confession and like leaning into that a little more, I think would be, I think it would be so great for this generation. Yeah, and yeah. I think like other, you know, maybe denominations or maybe other churches like are cater more to that than not specifically here, but then just like to just then other churches. That, like I feel like I forget a lot to confess because like I'm so used to just being like, oh, God forgives me. Like that, is, right. that doesn't mean you just stop confessing. Like you mm-hmm. still need to confess your skin. Sometimes your we, to God, so. especially in worship, because we're declaring back to God Hmm. attributes and things about him so much of the time or talking about his love for us it's almost that we skip the step sometimes in yeah. worship mm. yeah. of confessing it and bringing yeah. it to him mm. first and it's that classic to line the of, forgiveness it, it's that classic line if you can't lead somebody that you've never been yeah. yourself yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's like yeah and it's valuable too for the people around us yeah because you know? because when we're together worshiping one of the reasons that we worship together and not just in our houses um, individually is because sometimes, you know, people show up on a Sunday morning and, uh, you know, somebody they love just passed away, you know, yeah. or, or, um, or, or maybe they didn't, you know, something didn't go the way they planned it to. And, and, and sometimes people just don't have the strength to sing, you know? Um, but, uh, that's when the body of Christ gets to come around and and sing over each other yeah. like God's goodness and um and what like what moments of confession do corporate confession like that is um it establishes that we're all on the same plane you know mm-hmm. we're all sinners and Jesus came to die for all of us and that means yeah. that we all needed it mm-hmm. as you know um and no like you didn't need it more than I did you know and I didn't need it more than you did um, which means that we get to come to the same grace together, yeah. you know? Um, Absolutely. And so it just kind of establishes, like, we really are a unit as a body of Christ. Um, and he did the same thing for all of us, and we get to worship together, and we get to encourage each other, you know, because we're on, we're, we're on, we're on even ground, you know, hmm. in terms of, of um, you know, what the Lord's done for us. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, yeah. Let's go. Love this has it, been man. one of the best conversations I've had <laughs> in a long time, man. That's so good. So awesome. good. A um, little bit of a hard transition. <laughs> yeah. What? It's just one of the we things have hard we do on this podcast. Wait, right. no, no, never, never, never. Real quick. Well, the first, first, Stephen, thank you for like all this conversation. I think I yeah. I needed it. I know, like, it's just good to have you here. Yeah, so. yeah. that was awesome. Um, who's your favorite favorite band? Oh man. Um, Okay, so my favorite artist, mm-hmm. um, artist band, like whatever. Yeah, um, my favorite artist, I think, is uh, is John Mayer. Woo-hoo! Oh man, you need to listen to our Woo-hoo! podcast, my friend. <laughs> you you have missed out. Go stream the first. Sorry, I have episodes. a follow up question <laughs> after you finish. Okay, oh yeah, this. oh yeah. Oh, we, no, we, have a, we have a we have a follow up question. But now continue. I understand there is a diverse. Um, collection of opinion about this man and uh mm-hmm. and the life he's lived um i have nothing to say about any of that <laughs> uh but what what's your opinion on dear john by taylor swift uh i mean i don't know dude i don't know <laughs> continue, continue. Yeah. Um, but uh i think john mayer is one of the greatest songwriters and one yeah. of the yeah. greatest Absolutely. musicians yep. uh, of Absolutely. our age and i Word. think he needs to go down in history 100 yeah. percent. i think he's brilliant yeah so, yeah. yeah ian do the honors, Was that all man. you? Well, you uh, favorite band is Laney oh, for okay. sure. Okay, for sure. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay, go ahead. What are your uh, oh, <laughs> thoughts, opinions, and or feelings on Sob Rock? Oh, dude. Um, okay, so I I haven't listened to it as much as I should. Okay, that's fair. Um, that's that's a good thing. I think <laughs> I think it's awesome. Yes. yes! Woo! Here's why. Ian hates it. Here's why. Here's why. Here's why. Okay. I know it's a step out from what's contemporary. Okay. But he did exactly what he set out to do. Yes. And which Let's was go. what? Make bad music? No. No. Make timeless music. Saw Rock is not timeless. It is timeless. His other dude. stuff is Continuum is timeless. 
Continu- room for Continuum squares. is classic. Is classic timeless. is different than timeless. <gasps> this Explain. is a heated debate. Okay, we it. found we found him. Continuum. <laughs> we cons- have needed to see you on this <laughs> podcast for so long. Continuum. Um, if you listen to it, right, mm-hmm. it sounds and feels like the era it came from, right? Mm-hmm. And right. it's still good. Like it still holds up. But you still know that it was released when it was released. Sure. You know, Room for Squares, the exact same thing. Yeah. You know, Born and Raised, the exact same thing. Search for Everything. Oh, man. So same good. Same thing. Same thing. I love so that good. album. Um, Sob Rock, timeless, dude. You, can, you can't nail down a, a, an influence or an era, but each song holds truth that applies to everyone all the time so it's a different definition of the word timeless because i i'm taking that as like this song is just timeless and it'll like it's going to be considered a great like a classic i don't don't think it'll i don't think think it'll be considered i don't think it'll be considered that's a good yeah yeah but like yeah the the like what he sings about all of those songs and he did this on purpose he literally has talked about it and done interviews and said this um like the the purpose of every single song that he wrote on there was like this is the human experience like this is love as people experience it and this is yeah. life as people experience it you i know? guess i just feel like yeah i guess yeah. Oh, oh, man. Song. I, I guess song. i just feel like is uh, yeah. blows I, me away see steven's had the best take on this of anybody yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> wait I, did he convince you no absolutely <laughs> not because he, i completely but, agree with what he's saying but i still like the what music you're talking on about is a preference is just, <laughs> right. Yeah. It absolutely is subjective. That For sure. Everything's what well, he's. I mean, like everything's subjective to a degree. For sure. What you're saying, I would say, is accurate though. Yeah. But I just personally don't think yeah. the album's. I like get it, it, dude. Live. It is, it is super live, wonky. It was great. Yeah. Live. It was great. Have you I ever seen it. John live? No, dude. He's on my dude, bucket list. Dude, dude, we, so we all we saw went him. to see him. Stop it right now. Oh, it was so good. Oh my gosh. Oh my John Mayer. Gosh. If you are. Uh, John Mayer, when obstacle. this is the number one podcast I in the Mayer, world. Aaron Sterling, Isaiah Sharkey, <laughs> Steve Jordan, Pino. I need all of you guys. I Don just care Wass. about John. Stephen Hester, remember that name. Just remember <laughs> it, please. That's all. Oh, man. Well, hey. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, next up, Aiden had a... Right. a coffee yeah, question. Yeah, so we said earlier... Back to your barista days. We, we said earlier that you've been a... Bar- you said earlier, not we... That you've been a barista for six years. Six years. All right. So um, <laughs> here's here, here's the question: What is something that <laughs> what something something that people do in relation to coffee? Could be a place they go, a drink they order, a thing they say, anything that just pisses you oh off. Oh my god! Hold Jeez. really quick before anything. Go stream decaffeinated, <laughs> and now go stream. Recap <laughs> to catch up on everything that we've talked about coffee. About coffee oh, yeah. and what was it with Dylan? Unbottled, Bam. unbottled. Yep. Now, all right. <laughs> Here's the deal. I'm about to hurt a lot of people's feelings. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. More of this. I don't even know what you're going to so say. So I apologize first off to anybody um, who feels accosted. Um, self-titled coffee snobs are no coffee snobs at all and they need to stop that they need to stop okay <laughs> word because the self-titled coffee snobs are the ones who are going around and saying places like golden roast is a good coffee shop <laughs> you know don't hate don't hate on golden roast i'm gonna hate on golden <laughs> oh, roast he did he, he does you know golden roast? anyone listening golden roast is again i'm sorry but Coffee is one of those things where, like, I'm just going to hurt people's feelings. Golden Roast it's is not the worst me, coffee shop I've ever been to oh! in my life. It's so bad, bro. It's so bad. Wait, why? What's your reasoning behind this? Their coffee is horrible. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you something. Okay, I like it as, like, the shop, though. Like, I like the, oh, just, like, the, the, like, the it's vibe. A, is it's cool. a cool place. Yeah. It's I mean, cool I live place. right by it, so I oh, kinda, I get like, it. I'm partial. But yeah, sure. I, I, I will say, oh, uh, that's awesome. I went to Mahalo yeah. three days ago, Yeah. and I went to Golden Roast this morning. Dude. No comparison. And I've been to no. Mahalo before, but, like, back to back, it's yeah. like... No comparison. Dude, Golden Roast is like it's it's I'm I'm convinced that they just like use dirt instead of <laughs> coffee. Like either that or they just don't wash anything, you know? Like I watched them pull espresso one time, okay? And that stuff came out in like 6 seconds. 
You know, it was like water. Okay, for reference, um, oh. espresso <laughs> is usually around 30 seconds, somewhere <laughs> around there, okay? If you do it too long, it's really roasty and bitter and gross. If you do it uh, not long enough, then it is like sour and it's it's like super bright in your mouth. It feels like a tiny little explosions in the worst way. <laughs> it's really bad. Um, so you got to get a middle ground, right? And Golden Roast just doesn't. They just don't eat. They just don't. They rely on their syrup too much, okay? And their syrups aren't even good because they get a bad gr- uh, bad brand. I think they get Tabani or whatever it's called. It's bad. It's bad. Their caramel, by the way, tastes like medicine. It's not good. It's bad, dude. I really hope somebody who listens to our podcast regularly loves Golden Roast. I'm, I'm going there tomorrow with a so friend of mine, actually. Hey, give us, shoot us a DM or something on the email if, if you, you guys disagree. Have, if you guys have issues, you can talk directly to me. <laughs> My yeah. Instagram will be added on the podcast or oh, something. Yeah. It oh, will yeah. now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah absolutely. It will. So you will be able to find If him. you have issue with what I said, please talk to me and I'll have a delightful conversation with you yeah. and convince you you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah, I got a I got a mocha that's today. Amazing, bro. I got a mocha today. When I, I mean, I, okay, I should say Golden Roast. I got a Golden Roast because it's like the only coffee spot on mm-hmm. campus besides yeah. Starbucks. besides Starbucks. Yeah. yeah, and I want something yeah. a little more interesting than Starbucks. Now, when the peppermint mocha comes out at Starbucks, Same. I'm a basic white girl. Sure, but sure, sure. I am down. All right. Sure. <laughs> Sure, and I don't even know if it's it's not even like I, I don't know. I just like it because yeah. you know winter. You know yeah. it's fine. No, that dude. But, I'm a, uh, such a seasonal person. It's a thing. But yeah. So wait, Grant, are you gonna be drinking this? No. You sure? Yes. Okay. Just want to make sure. All right, Grant. On record, I'm <laughs> drinking no coffee. <laughs> Off record, I'm also not. Drinking are you not drinking? Drink? Why are you not drinking? I'm not a huge coffee person. I I like it because he has to prove listen, that. You wrong. got you got to go. Yeah, that's kind, that's I got to go listen. Honestly, to, I got to go listen to the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you you do need to go catch up. Yeah. So I'm not a huge coffee person. I like it communally, like with people. Sure. So if my mom and I are like hanging out, we'll go to Summer Moon or sure. something because she yeah. loves it. And I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, I'll go with her. Or like if I'm getting coffee with Blair Benfield or Zach Hume, like. Actually, with Zach, you might get a water, but like with other people, I'll get like a coffee. But cool. for myself, like I don't want to spend all that money just because yeah. it's a lot of money. Get right it. Now. it is a lot of money for sure. Yeah. For sure. Which is why you don't go to garbage places like Golden Roast. It's too <laughs> much don't. money to waste your money. I love this. <laughs> this is awesome. I it's, did, but the time I did get a coffee at Golden Roast, I went with Brian Hughes, the college yep. pastor here. So like I went communally. Dude, I'm like, going to have to go good. talk to him. <laughs> no. I mean, it's on mm. campus, so yeah, it, it's a good place, man, dude. Stephen, you and I should go there sometime. <laughs> you know, I kidding. really okay. Wait, so if Golden Roast <laughs> is like bottom tier, yeah, like right there, where Knoxville Coffee Shop, where what is top tier? What's top? What's top tier? Like middle, in good, between, and yeah. what's like this is top. a good okay. segue into the, my next. Question. All right, so here's the deal. All right, oh, there are three categories. Okay, there are three categories. Okay, um, good vibe. Right, good coffee, right, good experience. Love it. Okay, I, love that. I wow, good you've like you've right broken there. this down. I which, love this. Which one do you want? <laughs> a good experience, because good experience, experience kind of gives vibe. everything, right? Because I'm not. It, it's vibe I, and coffee, which I think like is what we're going for. I sure. don't love coffee as we've discussed sure. before, but yeah. uh, it's a vibe for me. All right. I, I'm I'm I will say I'm on the journey to being a coffee enthusiast I hope you out that's, that's where I'm <laughs> that's where I'm planning to go you seem like Anyways. the guy who would help me out yeah, too, yeah. If I I'd love to that. I'd yeah. love to um yeah uh Mahalo I think is okay. the best experience mm. okay okay I've never been it's fantastic yeah it's really nice they okay. do a good job nice people um I know many of them good people and and the coffee's pretty good um good conversation good music comfortable vibe like good music's a big one yeah it is a big one mm-hmm. for real that's true um, best coffee, treats up coffee shop. Shout out. <laughs> so, this is the segue to my next question. Sure. You worked there. Yes. How long did you work there? So I worked there uh, from February to, uh, uh, <laughs> when did I start here? <laughs> Three weeks Three ago. Three weeks, weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. So it's so like September. So February nice. to September. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Wait, wait. So about wait, seven he didn't months. answer good vibe. Which one's like? Oh, yeah, yeah. Good Essential. vibe? Yeah. Um, I think Remedy, which is hard because um, at least among the people that I talk to, I'm not going to I'm not gonna make a personal statement on this one, but to the people that I talk to, uh, Remedy is generally known as the coffee shop with the mean, mean baristas, right? 
Mm. So like, like <laughs> they don't really want to talk. They're nice <laughs> enough, but they don't. They just don't want to talk, and that's right, okay. Right, they yeah. have conversation. You know? And the coffee's sure. pretty good. Like it's pretty good. It's not like amazing, but it's pretty good. You know. But the aesthetic is my favorite aesthetic in Knox- in Knoxville for sure. Nice. Nice. For sure. Nice. Yeah. Anyways, okay. Back to the other question. <laughs> so, you worked at Treetop Coffee yes. for a time. Yes. And we were t- we were having a conversation about coffee the other day, and yeah. you mentioned that you made a that you made a drink for them. Yeah. That is still on the menu today. Yeah. No way. So, yeah. plug it, dude. Absolutely. All <laughs> right. So, head to Treetop Coffee Shop. Okay, it's in the middle of Sequoia Hills, right next to Bear Den Books and the Plaid Apron. All right. Super awesome. Great people. Tell them Steven sent you. Um, <laughs> My drink is the maple leaf, is what it's called. So it is, it's kind of like a mocktail, okay? Like a coffee mocktail. Um, and uh, so it's a cold brew based drink, right? Cold brew, a little bit of vanilla, right? And that's all as far as the coffee goes, right? But you make a foam that goes on top of it, and mm. it is a shaken heavy cream maple salted orange cold foam. Let's go. I'm sorry, Zach. I, I will be getting this coffee at some point. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna try it's, that. It's and here's the amazing thing. It's the great equalizer because people who hate coffee love it, and people who love black coffee love it. People who only like sweet drinks like it. People who only like bitter drinks like it. Like, like dude, I've not. We're gonna have to go try this. That's really. I have dude, not met someone who doesn't this. like it. I really I, haven't. I have been. I have been. Needing to go to Treetop to try it. Yeah, so I will go to Treetop as well. It's Very great. Soon. It's great. And they they do a little orange peel and put it on top of the foam. It looks Man, nice. That's so nice. dope. Instagrammable for sure. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah, nice. Aiden, did you have another question? Nah, that... dude. Okay. You got? I don't know. Okay. I love that. That's honestly my favorite coffee conversation I've had on the podcast, and Aww. we've had multiple. So. Wow, <laughs> uh, guys, that is a, good a high compliment. It is. Well, thank yeah. you. Um. What was your what is your like worst experience been as a barista? Like, <laughs> can, or can good one. can you tell us? Yes, one of I them? mean you don't have like to worst yes. customer it is. experience. Whatever. Yes, absolutely. I'd love to hear this. Okay, I'll tell you two. Let's I'll make go. them quick. Um, one of them, this person came through the drive through. It was the middle of rush. Uh, oh, this was when I worked at Starbucks. Okay, I started at Starbucks, worked there for three years, and then made my way up. Um, but, uh, I was still at Starbucks. It was the middle of rush. Rush lasts from like seven to nine. So it was probably like eight ish. Um, and, uh, I worked at the busiest store in the city. Okay. So like we did mad money. It was nuts. Um, <laughs> mad money. we did mad. Money. It was crazy. It was crazy. <laughs> um, so, but, uh, so we did, uh, we were in the middle of rush and this one car comes up and they take forever to tell us the drink that they want. And it ends up being like a $15 drink. <laughs> One drink. $15, right? No way. One wow. of the perimeters of the drink was that it had to be so hot you can barely hold it. Okay? Let me tell you a little something. Um, once drink get, uh, once drink, <laughs> once <laughs> milk gets to about like um, over like 210 degrees, that's when it starts to curdle. Right? Um and so, uh, like, legally, Starbucks can get in a lot of trouble for doing it past a certain temperature and then severely burning somebody, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> Maybe that was the plan all along. It could have been. <laughs> um, except <laughs> we heated up uh, to about 200 degrees, right? Yeah. Stupid hot. Um, the extra hot setting goes to 186 degrees, okay? The standard temperature that they push it to is 156 degrees, okay? Um, so uh, so we put it to about 200 degrees, right? Shoot. Make the drink, hand it off to him. Um, I'm just, I'm like 17 at this point, you know? <laughs> um, and uh, and I, I just hand this couple their drink. They pull up to the window. So they've already set like it takes the, it takes forever to get the drink made because they put like five extra shots in it or something. Um, so it takes forever to make it. So they hold up our drive through for probably an extra like two and a half minutes, which is insane because we were usually getting everybody in and out uh, within 30 to 40 seconds. You know? <laughs> yeah, dude. We what? were dang freaking insane. <laughs> That's like speed demon Starbucks right there. That's <laughs> insane. We were, so they basically like quintuple your time. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, so I hand them the drink 
and it's for the person in the passenger seat. Um, but the person who grabs it, um, she takes it and I guess it's her husband or something, but she takes it and she just looks at me and she goes, this is not as hot as they normally make it. And then she hands it to him and this guy starts screaming his lungs out at <laughs> me because the drink isn't hot enough and he needs a refund. And I was like, I can give you a refund. And he just, he was just yelling at me the entire time. And so one of my managers <laughs> came over and was like, what's the issue? And he was like, it's not hot enough. And uh, they were like, sorry. And then, and they just left. So what? yeah, like oh my gosh, it was dude. the loudest anyone has ever screamed at me was that man who did not have his drink hot enough. Oh my gosh. That's insane. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. My other story was um I had a uh, coworker hit me. Uh like backhand <laughs> me uh like during rush hour cuz I I uh I told them to be quiet cuz they were talking over a customer and I couldn't hear them. So they came over and they they hit me. Like dur- like in front of a customer? In front of everybody. No yeah. way. Are you yeah. Real- yeah. what did you do? Um I he beat him up. No, <laughs> no. Poured That's coffee. what I would have done, bro. This, I would have I know. <laughs> this was a woman. Um, oh, oh, never, okay, mind. never mind. I retract yeah. that never statement. Mind. So she. <laughs> I would have done oh, nothing. No. So she comes over and she um she like she like backhands me in the middle of my chest, right, and says, "Boy, don't you ever do that again," right? Um. <laughs> And so then she was as bad as like backing you in the face. Like, no, that's, no, that's the image I had. She was like, whack. No, 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 no. <laughs> Same. Um, but it was, it was, she, it was, she packs a punch. <laughs> Dang, dude. Um, anyways, so, but she, she does that and then walks away. And all of us in the store are wearing headsets, right? And normally, like, I'm not about confrontation like that. I'm not about like, like, you know, going like, hey, everyone on our team, look at what this person did. That's horrible, you know. But we're in the middle of rush, and she just hit me. And so I just go onto the headset, and I said, first off, I was trying to hear the customer, and you were talking over them, so I couldn't, and they matter most in this situation. Second off, you're not supposed to hit people, so don't. (laughs) And then she didn't say anything the rest of the day. Nice. Yeah. (laughs) That's awesome. Well, I mean, you yeah. showed what a her story. up, so. Yeah. What a story. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Dang, man. So, those are my two worst experiences. The escapades yeah. of being a barista. Yeah, that's dude. Awesome. That sounds, yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> that's that's a job right there. Dang. There I go. could give you so many stories, though. If you guys want to dedicate a mini episode to my well, barista actually, stories. Yes. The barista part two. Yes. Just let Some me know. Some bonus content right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Um, All right. So, final question for you. All right. Is As we begin to wrap up. Yes. Um. As the band comes out to play. <laughs> <laughs> so the band's... Don't you just love when the when the pastor yeah. says, so the band's going to come I out need on some stage. more bad. <laughs> so, no, don't play that loud. Wait, <laughs> drums aren't in yet. Um, <laughs> I had it muted. Nobody, <laughs> no, um, nobody is laughing at this except like the worship musicians listening, <laughs> which yeah. is great. We hope I they're love laughing. That. That's a little behind the scenes look at like what goes <laughs> what goes on when the, when the band comes back up. Um, so final question since none of us have known you very long yeah if if you've got something off the top of your head what's like one question for each of us something that you just want to ask us or you wanted to know it can or, be yes like, or no anything. it can be an essay answer yeah. anything you want man okay um, <laughs> I put him on the spot contemplating I I love TV shows and movies mm. <laughs> you really need to listen to our podcast. Favorite <laughs> favorite TV show or movie and why? Ugh. For any or or just the first one that comes to mind. Okay. Yeah. Um for me the first one that comes to mind is Outer Banks. <laughs> Aiden, you know I am a staunch defender of that show, but no. It well, just can't see, be. It let, just hang can't on, hang be. on, hang on, hang on. We broke it. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> Steven's done. Slow down. Slow down. No, yeah, so Outer Banks. Mm-hmm. Slow <laughs> down. Slow down. This is my just. I really f- liked it when they took their shirts off. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's man. the only thing that happens in that show. <laughs> Let let me justify my position. Here. Oh yeah, you they also ran around on beaches. <laughs> yes, I can. Watch He's gonna this. try. He's gonna I'm gonna try. do it right now. I do not watch TV or movies. I, I rarely watch TV or movies ever. This is true. Ever. 
So my last like <laughs> legitimate TV watching experience, besides like a stray docu series on Netflix, <laughs> which are fantastic. My last TV experience was when I watched Outer Banks. You had to have watched like Veggie Tales or something. You could have said <laughs> anything else. Anything okay, else. Okay, that's extreme. But <laughs> I love that. Aiden. Like, there, like, there, like th- there's just no other show because I don't gotta, watch TV. I know. But why is, and again, I am one of the biggest OBX fans you will meet. <laughs> but why was that the one that you picked when we you were like, I'm going to watch a TV show? Okay, what's what's your favorite childhood movie? I'm changing the question for you. Childhood movie? <laughs> just for Aiden. Just okay, for Aiden. Okay, just for Aiden. <laughs> <laughs> we love you. We love you. This is this is out of love. Our concern uh, is out incredible. of love. Okay, there we go. Let's That's go. There we go. That's something right I can there. get behind. That, was so that soundtrack's amazing. That was so funny. Dude, that soundtrack is amazing. That That's, movie is goaded. Dude, hey, my, Michael Giacchino composed oh that movie. Oh my gosh, hey, dude. Mike, so good. Michael Giacchino. If you're listening, if you're to, this listening podcast, to this, when this please. is the number one podcast in the world. Please. <laughs> See, I love the positive the positive energy over here from Steven about our podcast. Oh, being I love the number it. number one podcast I love in it. the world. I feel like it's going to happen now. Listen, even it definitely so isn't. Coldplay went amazing. years saying they were going to be the most famous band in the world, and, and look at them now. They are. Mm. That's true. We are the Coldplay of there. podcasting. Yeah. So speaking of optimism, to answer your question, my favorite TV show is Ted Lasso. I still haven't watched it. Oh, my oh, gosh. Dude, yeah, I need to. It's so oh good. Aiden, you also there's need to two, watch it. There's two Apple no. TV shows <laughs> that they're... No! <laughs> Aiden... There's Aiden two. is a TV snob. Now, no, I'm an adult, so like... Viewer discretion, viewer discretion about sure. some of these shows. Um, <laughs> sure. But two Apple TV shows I recommend watching, which Dylan just watched and he loves. Um, shout out Dylan, Ted Lasso, and Severance. Dude, Severance, Severance is so good. Oh my god, so good. No I'm a You're, massive Severance it's fan. It's insane. Oh my god, so good, dude. Oh my it's gosh, it's insane. Oh, we're gonna have to have I, a whole Severance like spoiler oh talk my gosh, at some point. Oh my gosh. Okay. I was so we just mad. opened up a part two right there. We did. I was right there. So mad. We were going to talk about Severance. Okay. Sorry. I'd never meet Severance. This is so cool. Yeah. Um, those Great two. Show. And then a recent movie that's been climbing the ranks for me. I have more favorite movies, but it's Catch Me If You Can with Leo DiCaprio and Tom Hanks. I oh, love nice. That I haven't watched that one. So it's, good. Yeah. It's so good. It's really a classic. Good I just it's haven't watched classic. it. It's so fabulous. good. Definitely recommend on that one too. Nice. So, Ian, one. go ahead. Hmm. Okay. Favorite TV show. Don't now. say Outer Banks, because if you do that, you'll get <laughs> crucified, get apparently. Apart, yeah, no, dude. I get the feeling I'll Steven's to probably shreds. not going to like this answer either. But I don't think it's the best, but it is my personal favorite. No, that's what I'm asking for. Right. So, The Office. Dude, I it's love The Office. It's just timeless, yeah. classic. Come on. Love it so much. Yeah. I was like, dude, I sat down. I've watched that show at least 12 times through. I've I mean, watched it once. Love that show way too much. It's great. Go. Yeah, that's mine. Yeah, it's awesome. That's a go. great show. Okay, but um, Grant gave a, a show and a movie. Aiden also gave, uh, consequently, a show uh, and a movie. It's time. Dude. <sighs> Just first one that comes to mind. Or one of them. Hmm. Hmm. Such a great question. Uh, Not my favorite, but one I really, really enjoyed is uh, Knives Out. Oh, uh, I almost on. said that. Yeah, I almost said that. Well, it definitely is one of my favorites. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah, I do want to watch that. One. There are not very many movies that like I want to watch. Oh man, want to watch Knives Out? Oh man, so good. I'm going to change this. Knives Out is so Dude, good. <laughs> there have been so, it, there have been so many podcasts where like they'll get into talking about movies, maybe with like, another guest, and I'll just be like, all right. <laughs> Okay, it's like, nothing because, like, personal. Because like I, I enjoy movies and TV shows, but like most of me is like I could be doing so much other things with my time. Where I I had two hours, I could do so much other things with two hours. I could do so many other things than experience the human perspective from somebody else's eyes. You're right. You're right, Stephen. Oh wow, you're my new favorite. Oh person. wow, he went there. <laughs> oh my gosh. They grow as a human being. Great, oh real quick, gosh. while we let this uh, <laughs> simmer down, how are you feeling about the uh, Tennessee-Bama game? Oh, my god, That's happening this Saturday. All right, so this episode will premiere post the Bama game. Yes, it will. Dude, that, um, one too, man. that was amazing. This, this episode will premiere post Bama game. So if the balls have won, let's freaking Praise go. Praise God. And the if they have energy not, is insane, and I will be in the student section. So if you watch the game and the student section was hype, I was there. It's going to be insane. The balls are, you gonna, are like, back. Paint your chest. 
Nah. Like just rip your shirt off. No, nah, I just wear a Peyton Manning jersey and let like ja- the other fraternity v. guys do that. Oh, dude, that'd be so funny. <laughs> anyway, um, Vols are on back on track. Um, college is fun, After guys. what, 20 years? After 20 <laughs> years. Not even kidding. Dude, I know. My dad um, <laughs> went to college. One season with Lane Kiffin, that was it. Oh, my dad went to college <laughs> in 1998 when we won the national championship. It's been, it's been 20 years, and he's like, Grant, it's coming back around. <laughs> I was like, all right, Dad. It's coming back around, and I'm hyped. <laughs> so anyway, if you're a Vols fan, let's so freaking go. So every time there's so, a Crenshaw... That that's what so At my the dad UT. so okay you have you guys haven't met Austin yet he might be on the pod someday but he is my uh, cousin and my dad has an identical twin his name's Brian so my dad and his twin went to UT together and they roomed together um, and they went to the national championship like they they won it that year tw- like guys we're gonna win the national championship so that's what I'm hearing right now so me and my cousin who are the same age we wanted to room together it's been like he lived in Memphis I lived in Knoxville we decided to go to UT together and room together. We're now living together and, you know, rooming together, all this stuff. And football's good. And we're number six in the nation, as, like, in this moment. So my dad my dad and my uncle are like, yo, we did something. The stars have a line. That's I don't know. So, I don't believe in fate, but, you know. Do you think UT's going to win? Uh, if we beat Bama, we have a chance. We just got to beat Bama and Georgia. Wait, 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 if, we, if we beat Bama Remember and Georgia, we have no, a chance. No, I mean, like, do you think we're going to beat Bama? Oh, beat Bama? Depends we got to start there. Okay, if, if we, we beat Bama, there. we do have a chance of beating Bama. That, Shut up. <laughs> if right- What's up, folks? This is Aiden from the future back again, coming with hopefully obvious news for any of you Vols fans out there. But uh, UT has beaten Alabama, and it is a it was a magical weekend to say the least. So um, that is the future update. Uh, go Vols, number three right now. So uh, yeah, back to the show, and you can hear our now obsolete conversation of if we think UT is going to beat Bama or not. Let's go. Bryce Young doesn't play, yes. If Bryce Young does play, still yes, but less yes. But I think hmm. we're at Neyland, and if our secondary can like stay on top of things, <laughs> that's which, uh, they did during big LSU, which they did during LSU. It's a big ass. They did. Um, and obviously, uh, Hendon Hooker is going to be on point. I think the whole offense is going to be on fire. And the, I agree about the offense. The energy is going to be ridiculous. But did so. you see our secondary during the Florida game? You could put traffic cones but out there. But then we also had a bye job, week. We, we had a bye week, though, and we looked good against LSU. We held them to 13, and they were number 25 in the nation. That's fair. Four and one at the time. That's fair. It was expected. Like, we had maybe, like, I don't remember. It was a very small, like, point. I don't know why is how we were supposed to win, like three or five points or something like that. And we won by 27 points. So I'm feeling pretty good going into Bama. And college game days there. It's going to be it's gonna be insane. So Let's go. Yeah. Anyway. I have some optimism that we might be able to beat Bama. But Dude, I've just I been here might, man. for I have, so long I watching Tennessee overwhelming be horrible optim- at Everything. Yeah. Which yeah. basketball and baseball have been good too recently. Just but saying. They, Tennessee just like always, I don't know, they just seem to always underperform. Come up like short, yeah. That big moment. Like our basketball team, we yeah, can't win true. a single game when we get to the March when we get to March Madness. True. Like that's we true. always lose. So I don't know. I hope we win. I'm very skeptical. If Bryce Young plays, I don't think we win. If he does not, I do think we pull it out. Cool. All right. Yeah. There it is. We'll see. You guys will know when listening to this. <laughs> you can skip all of this. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. Um, so, hey, Stephen, man, this Steven, has been such a good you. conversation. <laughs> this has been yeah, great. Man. Come on. I love so much for being here. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for asking me to be here, guys. Yeah, we'll be yeah. back soon with, Very soon. with right. some more special guests. So oh, yeah. stay Y'all ain't ready for our next guest. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. you guys, it's going to be an episode. All right. Peace. <laughs> see you guys. Guys, thank you for checking out our YouTube channel. If you want to watch our last video or keep up with our latest podcast, click right up here. And if you want to subscribe to Off The Clock YouTube, click right down there. Hit the bell if you want to get any notifications, and we'll see you guys next time.